All right, so if you wanted to paint your model now, you could. You know, I'm, I'm going to give that out if you want to sit here and paint on top of this whole thing. You know, now would probably be the time to do that. Uh, but what we're going to do, and I'll show you how to do that. All I do is have to add a new layer and set it to something like multiply if I wanted to. And let's say I wanted the arm right here to be a little gray. Very easy to do. Okay, multiply rocks as far as being able to do these little tiny things, just bumping up color. Now, if I didn't want uh, that to be a darker blue, um, I could just go with something like screen. I could go with something like, uh, well, let's say, hue. Hue will turn it to gray right in that area. And then I could put another multiply layer out there and that'll turn it to a different color, like let's say I wanted to go red on top of that. But see, I have to do a hue change in that area to get rid of the blue. So now I can get red in there. And then there's textures and all that other stuff, and it can go on and on for days. Just remember, you know, I want to complete this, and we can always go back to the image planes anytime we want. Uh, that's not a hard thing to do. Okay, so there's how you would paint your character And if you wanted to lay texture over the top, you just go get rust You copy paste it into Photoshop and then you turn this to whatever I would play around with the whole idea that there is no right answer here Sometimes soft light works sometimes multiply works. It all depends what you want to look like I would say play around with those layer adjustments. Those are your best friend Okay go a little creativity bug there now what I want to do is just I'm going to leave mine blue because of the time and I'm going to say now it's time to chop up the character and then I'm going to say let's use the pen tool and then my students are going to say oh man and if you're not familiar with the pen tool it takes a little bit of coercion with the pen tool but this is what you need to use with hard edge surfaces so it's like this you click click and hold, drag, click, hold, drag, click, hold, drag, and just kind of get that mantra into your head. Sometimes you only have to drag just a little bit. There is another way to do this, but, uh, and that's paint by selection. I would argue they're both good. But I'm sick of students not being able to use the pen tool. So, okay, so this is it. This is the big thrill. Just to be able to go all the way around here without losing your mind. Now I'm going to speed up the process because the gun's already transparent in this area. So I'm just going to go like that. All right, boring, right? If you're watching this, you should be actually probably selecting your own. And you're looking for some kind of word of wisdom. There is none other than good job. You made it all the way around. And if you messed up at all, uh, there is tools to, like, let's say the direct selection method. Um, I can pull these little points by double clicking on them. Sometimes I can grab a hold of them and then move them after the fact. Not the best method though. 
Let's say this one needs to go down a little bit so I don't get that handle. All right, there we go. So now I have that selection it's made. And what I want to do now is go into paths and turn paths into a selection. I'm going to be using paths a lot, so you might as well have this path up, and then I click and drag path down, and I go uh, select inverse and delete on the keyboard. Okay, there we go. That's pretty easy. Also, what I want to do is separate the this arm, this forearm. I also want to get rid of some of the stuff on the inside. So let's start with that. Let's see how fast I can do this. Okay, again, I use my path palette a lot, so delete. And see how clean the edges are with path? That's why I like using it so much. All right, now the last selection, hopefully I have time for this, is I want to take and select inside here. And I want to be able to use some of this hose. So I'm going to grab some of the hose. And then I'm going to go all the way around the gun. Just like that. And it looks like I need some adjustments on that. Again, he's going to be really small, but I'm just being picky and showing you how to do this because I know I, some, some students really work hard at this stuff and fail to realize it's going to be so small you can't see it, but that's okay. That's why I like. I like detailed students. So here we go. All right, now I'm going to take and edit, copy merged, edit, paste, and that will bring the arm into a new layer. All right, in the next little episode... I need to break it up so they they all look correct when they rotate. So that's next.